It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's County Public Schools, where we test scientific literacy, and we hope you play along with our players and maybe raise your own science IQs, just a few points. We're not in the studio because of the pandemic. All of our students are at their schools. They are on individual computers or they're sharing a laptop, all properly spaced out there because of the pandemic. And uh, even though we are changing the format, we keep our same six categories that we've had for our 36 years here in the Prince George's County Public Schools as we've been doing this program. We have green things, zoo parade, body systems, let's get physical potpourri, science potpourri, and Dateline Science. Each team gets 18 questions of comparable difficulty, and in each category we have a five, a 15, and a 25 point question, and they uh, go up in difficulty as those tallies go up. So let's get started. Let's meet that team first from Kenmore Middle School. Say hello please to Ayush. Ayush, wish you waved everybody. He's the captain of the team. Joined by Ellie. Hey Ellie, give a wave to everybody at home. And last but not least, Kingsley is here. Hey Kingsley. That's right. These guys are ready in Wellington and raring to go. And it looks like you're wearing your school colors there. Is green the school color there at Kenmore? All right. Well, appropriately, let's go to the green things category. Let's get started with your five-point question in green things. If you want to keep a healthy liver, doctors say that you should drink this plant's beverage, especially the espresso variety. We're talking about coffee, the coffee plant. And espresso coffee is when it's very, very strong. Let's go to the 15-point question in green things. In Israel, the Judean date palm tree had been extinct for 2,000 years until two botanists were able to get newly found seeds to germinate, produce plants, and eventually through this process, get fertilization to occur, and thus continue the species. Germination? Say it again. Uh, germination? All right, Ellie says germination. All right, Ge uh, let's see, Ayush and Kingsley, any other options there that you're thinking of? Maybe fertilize? That's, uh, okay. That's what he said, though. Yeah. They got newly found seeds to germinate, to produce plants, and eventually through this process, get fertilization to occur, and thus continue the species. Pollinate. Pollinate. That's it. Pollination is what I wanted to hear. Yes, there were a lot of words in there, and uh, I think you, I sensed that you knew what it was. Good answer. Let's go to the 25-point question. It is a visual. It's also a math question. This strange looking vegetable is a Romanesco cauliflower, a plant whose buds never flower and are arranged according to a Fibonacci sequence of numbers, like this. I'm going to give you a sequence. Give me the last number in the sequence, please. Listen carefully. One, one, two, three, five, eight, Thirteen. One more time. One more time. The Fibonacci sequence of numbers. The number of buds on that cauliflower. Fibonacci sequence goes one, one, two, three, five, eight, what? Thirteen. Thirteen. All right. We will give you the credit for that. We will continue. Zoo for five points. There are optical versions of this rodent named device, and there are laser versions of this rodent named device. 
depending on whether the light source is infrared LED or a laser. Mouse or a mouse. That's right. You have a you can have a laser mouse or you can have an optical mouse. That's right. Zoo for 15 points. By contracting muscles in its signature appendage, this world's largest pachyderm can take in large amounts of water. Sperm whale? Say it. A sperm whale? Not a sperm whale. No, we're talking about an elephant. An elephant. Oh. Its signature appendage. Pachyderm means thick skinned. Pachyderms are elephants and rhinoceroses. Let's go to 25 point question. You might have seen this in the news. Because of climate change, some warm blooded animals are going through shape shifting. Their beaks are getting longer, their legs are getting longer and their ears are getting longer, all of which could help them do what to cope with climate change? Stay above water? Sea Stay level. above water? Sea um, I don't know that longer ears would help you do that. Uh, legs and beaks and ears will help to dissipate heat because the world is getting hotter. That's why elephants have big ears, so it's a way for heat to radiate back into the atmosphere. Let's give you your last three questions in this opening round. Let's go to the body systems. When you cut yourself for five points, when you cut yourself, you should apply an antiseptic so bacteria can't get into the wound and cause a what? Infection. Infection. Infection is right. Everybody knew that one. Good answer. Five points. Let's go to 15 points for multiple choice. For the first Three years of a child's life, something occurs called infantile amnesia because the child cannot do which of the following? Form sentences, control its emotions, or remember anything? Uh, remember anything? Who's saying that? Ayush. Ayush, all right. It is indeed remember anything because the word amnesia means to forget things. Well done. Here's the 25 point question for you in body systems. Last question in your first round. Pope Francis had an operation this past summer on this C, as in cat, C initial body organ that is also known as the large intestine. The colon? Colon? Colon is right, absolutely right. Yes, uh, colon cancer is a big threat these days, and luckily the Pope was able to survive that. And your score, Ken Moore, for after the first round is 140 points. Nicely done. We'll see you again shortly. It is now time to meet that team from Samuel Ogle Middle School. Let's say hello first to the captain. That is Shavoy. Shavoy, could you wave to everybody watching today? Nice to have you here. Shavoy is joined by Alonzo. Hey, Alonzo. And another wave from Kirik. Hey, Kirik, nice to have you on the show. Some Science Bowl veterans here playing our game. And let's get started. We have your first questions from the Green Things category. Here's Green Things for five points. One of the eight V's, eight vegetables in the drink known as V8, is this leafy green, renowned for how much iron it contains and how much it can power Popeye the Sailor? Spinach. It is spinach, absolutely right. 15 points in green things. When the Chinese shut off the first fireworks, they stuffed gunpowder into the stems of these plants, renowned as panda food. Bamboo. Bamboo, Bamboo that's right, good answer. We're on a roll here. Two in a row. Here's the last question in green things for 25 points. At one time, these plant parts from which tulips grow were worth more than, were worth more than gold in the Netherlands where they're famous. Stem. I'm hearing stem. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes, stem. Uh, actually, tulips grow from bulbs. 
bulbs. You put those bulbs in the ground in the fall, and then they usually pop up just before Easter after they have overwintered and been vernalized. Let's go to the zoo. All right, Samuel Ogle for five points. In the cartoon Dora the Explorer, one of Dora's sidekicks is this I-initialed lizard that looks like a miniature dinosaur. Iguana. Iguana is right. Good answer. For 15 points, we have a visual question. Look at this, Samuel Ogle. The Malio, a rare bird from Indonesia, lays its eggs deep underground, buries them, and abandons them, allowing the heat of decaying vegetation and nearby thermal springs do this process. Incubation. Absolutely right. They are not born incubators, and because they live in a hot place, they are taking advantage of the heat given off by decaying vegetation and those warm waters. Good answer. 25 points. Zoo, here it is. A gorilla at the Bronx Zoo was operated on recently because it had developed glaucoma. This is a multiple choice question. Glaucoma is a condition that affected the gorilla's heart, its digestive system, or its eyes. Its eyes. eyes. Eyes indeed, yes, a hardening of the humor in your eye leading to glaucoma. Good answer. Let's go to the body system questions for five points. What adjective that is also your body's joint between your humerus and radius and ulna bones describes the shape of macaroni pasta? Elbow. Elbow, Elbow macaroni is right for 15 points body systems. Aboard the International Space Station, these two bodily fluids are recycled as drinking water. Tears and pee? Bubbles. <laughs> I hear some ferment out there. All right, I'm hearing something from Alonzo. Alonzo, what are you saying? Oh, I, I didn't say anything. Anything. All right, how about Kira? Kira, any ideas here? Two fluids, bodily fluids, recycled as drinking water on the ISS. Sweat and urine. Sweat and urine. And then, Captain, I go to you. Um, Shavoy, you get to choose. Sweat and urine. Sweat and urine, absolutely right. Good choice. Last question for you in this round. Here it is, 25 points in body systems. For us humans to effectively practice thermogenesis, which means what? We have to shiver. Making our own heat. Making our own heat, absolutely right. You're getting the muscles to shake in there and you're trying to generate heat, thermo heat and genesis to begin. Nice round. All right, Samuel Ogle, you end this first round with 160 points. Excellent work, we'll see you again in just a few minutes. We welcome back the team from Kenmore Middle School. And before we ask the last nine questions, let's find about a little bit about the players, some of whom have played our game before. And let's start with the captain of the team, and that would be Ayush. Ayush, tell us a little bit about yourself. Why did you want to be on the Science Bowl? Why have you been on the Science Bowl? Well, I've been on the Science Bowl because I like science. I love to do things with science. Anything with science, I'm always for it. Wonderful. Career goals, do you have some at this point in your life? Uh, yeah, I want to become an anesthesiologist when I'm older. Wow, all right, so that's a very specific goal. Uh, so you've got lots of school ahead of you. You seem like a very disciplined student and I know you're going to, you're gonna get that goal. Thanks for playing our game. We love having you here. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go first to Ellie. Hey, Ellie. Hello. Hey. Are you having a good time yet? We got you out of bed early today, and here's this guy throwing questions at you. Are you doing all right? Yep, I'm having a good time. <laughs> I'm glad. This I'm is really all glad. <laughs> How did you prepare for this? Um, well, we spent uh, a, a few weeks leading up to this. You know, we made a schedule, and we, we tried to have regular meetings and do the practice that we. Uh, agreed to. 
Yeah, it's, and watching old episodes is helpful because the style of our questions, uh, even though we try not to repeat questions, the style's pretty much the same. Uh, I asked the captain what he was thinking about doing sometime uh, in the future. How about you? What do you think as you grow up? Um, I've always wanted to be an author or an artist when I grow up. I think that would be really fun to do. Yeah, fun. And, you know, we all need creative outlets, and those will provide them for you. You're playing such a nice game here, Ellie. Keep it up. Let's talk to the last member of the team from Kenmore, and that would be Kingsley. Hey, Kingsley. Hi. Nice to have you on the Nice to have you on the show. Why did you want to do this? You didn't have to, but we're glad you did. Um, I thought it would be really fun, and I would be able to test myself to see how well I know science facts. Boy, I love that answer because we have to challenge ourselves in life. If it's academic or athletic or whatever it is, we want to see what we're made of and how well we can do. Just before I came on, I saw in the newspaper that the fellow on Jeopardy, who's been winning and winning and winning, finally lost after winning $1.5 million. But, you know, he every time he came on there, he had to test himself. Can I beat, can I best these people that are next to me here? What do you want to do someday, young man? Uh, I'm not really sure, but I want to do something in the computer science field. Yeah, it's, you can't go wrong with that. The world is going in that direction, and uh, um, I know you're going to be successful with that. Thanks for playing our game today. All right, Ken Moore, time for the second round of questions. Your second nine questions just sitting right now at 140 points. Uh, first category, let's get physical. Let's do that for five points. Here we go. Clarence Birdseye learned that the best way to freeze vegetables, like peas, so that they don't get all mushy when they're eventually cooked, is to freeze them quickly. Otherwise, the shards from these C-initialed structures that form when ice freezes will break the cell walls. Crystals. Crystals is right. Good. 15 points and let's get physical. The buildings along Miami Beach, like that condominium that tragically collapsed recently, the buildings along Miami Beach sit atop this kind of sedimentary rock formed by the calcium carbonate shells of long dead sea creatures. Um, is it sandstone Sand or limestone? Mm. Uh. Hmm. Okay, I'm not hearing anything from Kingsley or Ellie. I think, Ayush, you're offering up a couple things. Um, I need your final answer. Ayush, what do you want to say? Uh, I'm going to say sand, or you guys should say limestone? limestone. Limestone. All right, what is the answer? Limestone. Limestone is correct, yes. Let's go to the 25-point uh, question and let's get physical. Toothpastes advertise that they are low acid dentifrices, meaning they rank low on this scale that determines the level of acidity and alkalinity of substances. pH scale? pH. pH is right, the pH scale. Good. Got all three of those. Off to a great start in this second half. Let's go to potpourri. Like all for five points, like all the main characters in the Transformer movies, the Decepticon was one of these. Autobot. Oh, Autobot. Autobot or a robot. Absolutely right. We will take that. For 15 points in potpourri, with space flights now available to people willing to pay millions of dollars, the likelihood that they'll suffer from the disorientation known as space sickness is high. That's because the lack of gravity often causes astronauts to do this a smelly reverse of the digestive system's normal peristalsis. Fart? I'm hearing lots of things. All right. Kingsley, what'd you say? I didn't say anything. You didn't say anything. Ellie, did you say something? Uh, flatulence? Flatulence. Uh, all right. I'm hearing that. And Ayush, did you say something? A fart? No. Actually... Peristalsis is what moves food from your mouth to the stomach. When it reverse, reverses, you throw up. You puke. 25 points in potpourri. Scientists whose specialty is pyrotechnics 
are much in demand on what particular day in the United States every year? The 4th of July. That's the way to do it. Good. Pope Bree for 25. All right. Dateline. Last three questions. Here we go for five points. Our Drew Freeman Middle School here in this county is partly named for Dr. Charles Drew, a famed surgeon who developed a process for storing this essential bodily fluid often transfused during surgery. Heart? Blood. Blood. I don't know why I said heart. All right, so Ayush, what are you saying? It's going to be blood. It is the blood, indeed. Uh, Ellie, that was a good response. Yeah, heart and blood go together, but the fluid part is what we needed. 15 points, a visual question, and a multiple choice question. Look at the picture, please, Kenmore. A famous Austrian zoologist, you see him here by the name of Conrad Lorenz, demonstrated that newly hatched geese missing a mother will treat a nearby human as their mother and follow the person wherever he or she will go. Is this phenomenon known as, here are your three choices, instinctiveness, imprinting, or impressionism? Instinctiveness, imprinting, or impressionism? Imprinting. Who's saying that, please? Ayush. Imprinting. Ayush? Imprinting is correct. Yes, indeed. Nicely done. Last question for you in the game is 25 points in Dateline. A human skull found recently in China, dubbed Dragon Man, is thought to be closer to us human homo sapiens than this N-initial caveman long thought to be our closest evolutionary ancestor. Neanderthals? Neanderthal is correct. Nicely done. All right. All right, Kenmore, you end the game with 260 points. What a great second half you had. Will it be enough to win the game? We'll be back in a few moments to let you know. All right, we're rejoined by that team from Samuel Ogle. And before we ask them their second nine questions, let's find out about our players here. Let's go first to the captain, Shavoy. And Shavoy, uh, this is a little different from normal science bowl. Uh, how did you prepare for this? Because uh, we kind of rearranged the furniture on you. Um, I started watching science bowl videos and things like that. Yeah, that's the way to do it because, you know, uh, the kinds of questions we ask are predicated on you having a curiosity about the world and knowing where to go to look for science information. How do you know so much about science? Um, I really like science. It's, it's really fun to me. And whenever I'm in my classes, especially science, I like to pay attention. So you're obviously uh, a great student. I can tell by the way you're answering and uh, you have a directness about you and uh, you're, you're, you're very impressive. What, what do you want to, would you like to go into science as a career? Um, yes, there's a lot of things that I would like to do in science, mainly marine biology, but that's just only one of the things I'm still thinking. Yeah, you've got a lot of, uh, that's a great uh, aspiration, but you've got a lot of time to experience other things. Uh, but I like that the STEM subjects are intriguing to you. Good luck to you in the second half here. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's talk to uh, Alonzo. Hey, Alonzo, what brings you to the Science Bowl today? Why did you want to do this? You told me, I think, before that you played the game before. Yeah, I did play in elementary, so I thought it'd be uh, fun to do it again. You know, learn a little bit more in science. Absolutely. What school were you at when you were in elementary? In elementary school, I went to uh, Whitehall. Whitehall, yeah. Whitehall has become quite the powerhouse. They've been winning county championships. And uh, so there's a, a lot of history there behind uh, their school. And uh, I'm glad you were part of it. Uh, what do you want to do someday? Um, honestly, I don't know that much. Uh, I could go for a career in science, but I'm in band right now. So I think uh, I might go for a career in music. Yeah. Do you play an instrument? Yeah. What do you play? Uh, I play the saxophone. Saxophone, that's great. I used to great. play the alto saxophone, but now I play the baritone saxophone. Wow. Yeah, it's a great creative outlet, music, and uh, 
Yeah, it, it, what a, a great career you might have ahead of you. And, uh, you know, science is involved in music, too. Science is everywhere. Nice to have you on the show today. Let's talk to the last member of your team, Kirik. Hey, Kirik. How's it going so far? Are you enjoying this? Or uh, are you feeling, oh, my goodness, why did I get involved? No, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. Oh, I'm glad. That's what we want. Science can be fun and should be fun, and people at home are amazed at how well you and your teammates and the other schools do, um, because science literacy, especially now, living through this pandemic, people who are scientifically literate make good choices oftentimes, and they're not afraid when things come out. You know, you, you can understand how things work, and we're learning how it works through the scientific method. What do you want to do someday? Um, I want to be a neuropsychologist. Wow, why so? That's a, that's a great idea. Um, so I can identify how the brain functions create the um, like depression and anxiety, so I can try and find a cure for those things. Yeah, and, and that uh, those kinds of conditions are epidemic in the world today because things are so tough. So I think that's just terrific, and uh, we'll be proud of you when, you when you make it, and I know you will. Thanks for playing our game. All right, you uh, had 160 points in that first round, Samuel Ogle. You have nine more questions. Let's go to let's get physical for five points to start you out. Astronomers were excited to see a black hole swallow a neutron star, an object that has more of this quality determined by dividing its mass by its volume than any other object in the universe. Density. Density is right. Mass divided by volume gives you the density. Excellent. For 25 points in Let's Get Physical. A perfectly preserved tick was found recently in a piece of this substance that results when tree resin hardens. It had a prominent role in the first Jurassic Park movie. Amber. Amber is correct. Here's the 25-point question in Let's Get Physical. All right, the answer is going to have three parts. Listen carefully. If you're without your GPS, oh my gosh, what are you going to do? And you have to rely on a compass. You're out there hiking. You have to rely on a compass. Just remember this sentence. Never eat soggy waffles to remember the compass points from the top Starting in the north at zero degrees, give me the other three directions and their points in degrees. 360, 360, 90, 180, 270. I hear 90, 180, 270, and the directions are, give me the, the, the compass points. Which one is 90? 180 is south, 270 is west. Brilliant. Thank you, guys. Perfect. Let's go to Science Potpourri for five points. Although a wolf in sheep's clothing is from stories, if it actually occurred, it would be a clever example of this tactic used throughout the animal kingdom. A wolf in sheep's clothing would be a clever example of this tactic used throughout the animal kingdom. Camouflage. Camouflage it is, indeed, yes. For 15 points, potpourri. Scientists have discovered an anticoagulant in the saliva of vampire bats that the name for this famously undead villain who could only be killed by a stake through his heart. Dracula. Dracula is correct. And for 25 points in potpourri, the Procter & Gamble Company may soon make it possible for astronauts aboard the space station to launder their clothes instead of throwing them away when they start to stink too much. They're doing this by developing a special kind of this D as in David, by developing a special kind of this D-initialed substance, like Tide, that can be used in zero gravity. Detergent. Say it again, nice and loud. Detergent. Detergent is right, good. All right, guys, Dateline Science for five points. 
visual question. Look at your screens, please. Scientists think they may have cracked the DNA code of this famed Italian artist and inventor who painted the Mona Lisa and drew up plans for the first helicopter that you're looking at right now. Da Vinci. Who's talking? Me. What did you say, Chavoy? Leonardo da Vinci. It is indeed da Vinci, yes. One of the first STEM scientists, I might add. For 15 points, in Dateline, a quote, don't reach out to aliens, they can harm us, said this famed physicist, who is credited with discovering black holes and spent most of his life in a wheelchair crippled by Lou Gehrig's disease. Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking, it is. Last question for you in the game, Samuel Ogle, for 25 points. In 1687, this man's book, Principia, was published, explaining in its pages the laws of motion and the law of gravitation. Isaac Newton. It is Isaac Newton for 25 points, and I think you ran the board there. You did indeed get everything right in that second round, so you end the game with 295 points. Congratulations. Well, we knew we had two dynamite middle schools with us today, teams that have always done well in the show, and they did not disappoint. What wonderful playing, what great scientists they already are. Our final tally today, Kenmore, 260 points, Samuel Ogle, 295. Samuel Ogle, congratulations. We're going to see you in the next round of competition. And let's give a nice round of applause to Samuel Ogle and to Kenmore for wonderful playing today on this Zoom version of Science Bowl. We also would like to, this doesn't happen just because the students want to. That, of course, is important. But behind the scenes, we have sponsors, teachers who give up their time, administrators who lend their support in this extraordinary kind of year that we've been having. And we thank Ms. Fodley and Mr. Millspaw. Mr. Millspaw is here from Samuel Ogle. Can you wave to us, Mr. Millspaw? I think he's back there. Thank you, sir, for all you've done. We also have a coach there at Samuel Ogle. Karen Pumphrey, Miss Pumphrey, you've been with us for many years. Congratulations on this wonderful achievement here today over at Kenmore. Uh, talk about a great tradition. We were talking with the team earlier on. Kenmore has won more county championships than any other middle school in our 36-year history, and you can see why. And a big reason for that is the coaching, and Beth Novick is out there. Beth, thank you for doing such a great job and for getting these young people ready for this game today. Uh, and we also have Tan May there. Tan May, wave to everybody out there because you're an important part, important part of this team, an integral part, and we appreciate all of you being here today, and thank you for joining us. And uh, We'll see you all next time on another edition of Science Bowl. Bye-bye, everybody.